stand up to praise the Lord. Let's just get our hearts and, and our minds and everything just focused on the goodness of the Lord, the promises of the Lord, the kindness of the Lord, amen, <laughs> the healing of the Lord, <laughs> that's what I'm really focusing on today. Let's just lift our hands up to him. Father, you tell us to enter your gates with thanksgiving in your courts with praise and lord that we know that you are our god and we are the sheep of your pasture and so uh father you're you're our king but you're also our father you're our shepherd you're our healer our provider our redeemer you're the lifter of our head and lord we know we're going into a new season of our life and many new things are ahead. And so, Father, you tell us to let go of the old and to walk into the new, Father. And so we bless you this morning. We love you. Strengthen us from the top of our head to the toes of our feet. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
into the new thing he's doing in our life. So let's thank him in advance. Come and see what God has done. Thankfulness will keep you from being deceived. Thankfulness will keep you from being deceived. Amen. 
Let's sing that chorus one more time. One, two. pray protection over our congregation today. Father God, we pray protection over their health. We pray protection over their destinies, over their wealth, Father. Lord, those that love you and sow into your kingdom, Father, you will give them wealth even in a drought. And I, I just pray shalom over our people, over our church. I pray the total package of blessings, surprises. God, that you can, you can make streams come in a desert. You can cause a mountain to be, to be made low. You can cause a valley to be raised high. And Lord, those who call on the name of Jesus live a blessed life. You protect them. You're a good God and we put all of our trust in you. Our trust is not in our, our talents, it's not in our looks, it's not in our abilities, God. Our trust is completely in the name of the Lord. We thank you that all of your promises that you gave Abraham, they belong to your children. And this morning, Father, we sang into our future, come and see what God has done. Bring encouragement and strength to your people. Strengthen them in their faith. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, Mosley, we would love for you to come and share God's word. And do you guys appreciate him partnering with our church? And we just love you. And I want to bring you a message of joy and good news. And that's a message I want you to live with every day in 2021. And my message starts with a gift. It's a gift that Jesus brought to us. 
And it's Galatians 3, if it'll come up. Promises of God is the name of my message. Galatians 3. And Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For as it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. All right, let's pray and we'll talk about it. Lord, I thank you that these people are here today. I thank you for the opportunity. I ask you to help me feed your sheep. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Here's our gift, guys. This is a gift that was purchased on the cross. It was purchased on the cross on Good Friday and delivered with a pretty bow on it on Easter morning. And Christ has redeemed or rescued us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That's from the Old Testament. So they would put to death criminals by hanging them on a tree. And they said, look, if you get convicted and you're hung on a tree, that's, you are cursed. So Jesus hung on a tree, or in our case, a cross. And why? And here's what the Bible says. It's such an amazing thing. The Bible says, why did, what was obtained when he hung on that cross? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. He bought, Jesus Christ bought for you the blessing of Abraham on the cross. You were not entitled to it. You weren't getting it. You were not, it's not, that blessing, the the address on it was not going to be delivered to your house before Jesus. But with Jesus, yes. Because here's what it meant to be a Gentile without Christ. It's Ephesians 2.12. We don't have it up on the board. I'll just read it to you. Paul says, You were without Christ, being aliens and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, until Jesus bought for you the blessing of Abraham. So let's see what is the blessing of Abraham. Well, before we get there, there's one more verse in Galatians 3.29. The last verse of that chapter says, and if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed or children or descendants and heirs according to the promise. If you belong to Jesus, you get to call Abraham as your father. Another translation says, and this is the Mosley translation. (laughs) If you trust in Christ, if you cling to Jesus, If you love Jesus, everything God promised Abraham, he promises to you. And it's a lot, and we're going to go over it. And you'll be blessed to see all that Jesus bought for you. So the promises of Abraham are in Genesis 12, at least some of them, my favorite ones. Genesis 12, beginning at verse 1. A sevenfold blessing. And the Lord said, the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country and from your kindred and from your father's house to a land I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. And and I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot went with him, and Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. Let me just say something about verse 4. And Lot went with him. Well, I thought God said, don't take your kindred. He took Lot. Abraham was not perfect. But here's the point. You don't need to be perfect to be blessed by God. Aren't you glad for that? You and I don't need to be perfect. Sometimes... You know, good enough will work. Another thing, he was 75 years old. Right. You're not too old <laughs> to get you. the gift God has for you. Amen. It's not too late. I'm not even 75. <laughs> close. close. <laughs> I'm close. I'm edging up on it. I'm edging up on it. <laughs> I'm knocking on the door. (laughs) So let's look at this wonderful passage of Scripture, which I would love it if you would memorize. 
God says, get out. Told him, get out. Get out of your country and your kindred and your father's house to a land I will show you. God's saying to him, get out of a, stop hanging around to those people. Those guys are moon worshipers. Yeah, they were demonic. They had demonic worship. He said, get out of there. Get out of there. Come to a land I will show you. So here's what he's saying to you and I this morning. Get out of an old way of thinking. Get out of a thinking that your, that your job is your source. Get out of a, a way of thinking that government is going to save you. Or that some political party is your answer. God is your answer. Get out of that way of thinking. Get out of the way of thinking that, well, I've always failed at this, I'll probably continue to fail. Get out of that. And God says, come to a land. I will show you. Mm -hmm. I'm not showing you now. I will show you. It's okay to go when you haven't seen the full destination. Mm -hmm. I will show you. If you believe me, if you trust me, if you walk with me. You know... He said, I will, four times in that set of scriptures and implied two more. Six times God says, I will, I will, I will, I will. Just follow me and I will. He's not asking you to do it. He just says, follow me and I will. That's all, that's all he asked of Abraham and that's all he's asking of you. Yes. Follow me and I will. Okay, the first blessing, I will make you a great nation. Now, I have 18 grandchildren, <laughs> so I'm pretty much of a great nation. <laughs> but it's not that. He's saying, I will make you a great nation. He's saying, I will make you strong. I will make you victorious. I'll make you more than a conqueror if you follow me. That's blessing one. Blessing two, I will bless you. Oh, that's powerful. Don't skip over that. God said, I will bless you. In other words, I will grant you favor. Yes. Do you guys know that one hour of favor is better than a lifetime of toil without it? Consider the story of Joseph. In one hour, he went from being a prisoner in a dungeon to being second in command of Egypt. Yes. In one hour, because of the favor of God. Yes. God is telling you, if you follow me, I will show you favor. All the, all the great things God has for you is in this blessing that he wants to give you. Number three, I will make your name great. You'll be known for being great at whatever you do, whether it's a mechanic or a bus driver or an airplane pilot. You'll be known for being great at that. People will honor you and seek out your counsel. Your children will call you blessed because God says, I will make your name great and I'll make you renowned. Number four, you shall be a blessing to others. That's super important. Yeah. You know, about two years ago, Luann called me up. I was, uh, had taken my staff down to the Dream Inn in Santa Cruz for a retreat, and she called me in the morning and said, I just had a vision from God. Uh, and God showed me you're Joseph of Arimathea, who was a man, after Jesus died, went to Pilate and asked for his body, and he took the body of Christ down carefully, reverently, and he wrapped it in white linen, and he put it in his own tomb. She said, I see you doing that. I see you taking care of the body of Christ. Wow, that changed my life. Thank you, Luann, for sharing that with me. Now, I've, I've, that's my call. That's one of the main calls of my life is to help take care of the body of Christ. You know what they used to do with crucified people? You think they treated them well after they died? Of course not. They took their bodies and they cast them into a pit with other dead bodies. Can you imagine taking the body of the Lord Jesus and casting him into a pit with a bunch of other dead bodies? God forbid. But Joseph came forward and did that. And this is a blessing God will give you and everyone in this room. 
He will help you take care of the body of Christ. Yeah. He will help you. He will send you money. Because do you, do you guys know it takes money to run a church and to have a ministry? Do you know that? It takes money to preach the gospel. And God will send you money in this blessing of Abraham to help the body of Christ. I will, cur I will bless him who blesses you. Wow, that's wonderful. I will bless him who blesses you. I will help him who helps you. I, I will promote him who promotes you. I will honor him who honors you. I will reward him who rewards you. Isn't that great? Imagine how that blesses the group you're with. When the group you're with does something nice for you, God is blessing them. This is fantastic for churches, for my law firm, for all groups. When people help you, God says, I will help them. And here's the other one. I will curse him who curses you. Wow. You and I are going to be so tight with God that he will actually curse someone who curses us. He's going to notice when someone disrespects you, God will disrespect him. When someone tries to stand in your way, God will stand in his way. When someone pushes, tries to push you back, God's going to push him back. When someone tries to stop you reaching your dreams, God's going to stop him from stopping you. Isn't that fantastic? Wow, what a, what a fantastic thing to have working in your life. That's the sixth blessing. The seventh one is, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. We are the light of the world. We have the answer. We have the only answer. Everything else is a temporary answer. There is no permanent answer apart from Christ. That's why in us, through us, all the families, you see God, God, loves families not so much nations today families yes. churches through us God will bless all the families of the earth because we have the light we have the truth we have the message yes. this is the fantastic life altering blessings God wants to give you that Jesus purchased on the cross yes. Now, how do you employ that? How do you use that? How do you make that work for you? If you say, well, I don't think it'll work for me, then it won't. If you say, oh, well, I'll believe that when I see it, you'll never see it. You can go through another year without receiving all God has for you if you don't embrace this but if you will embrace these these things if you'll embrace this gift if you'll get up every morning and you put it on like a fresh set of clothes then you will live in the in the power of this you'll live in the victory that God has for you you need to believe it and live it live as if it were true if you'll just live as if it were true it will be true God rewards those who trust him and believe him. But let's be really practical. Let's be really practical how to put this uh, to work. Really practical. And it's in Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. And the Bible says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses is a minister saying, now here's what I believe. Okay, you know why the, the Bible is powerful? The Bible is powerful not because it's a history of what happened then. The Bible is powerful because what God said to them, he says to us. That's why it's powerful. And what God said to Joshua, I believe he says to you and I this morning. So let's see what he said. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Moses, my servant, is dead. No whining, no mourning. What happened to us in 2020 is dead. Soon to be dead. <laughs> 
2020 is dead. <laughs> now, arise. Yeah. Arise, church. Arise. Yep. And go over this River Jordan. The River Jordan, for 40 years, Moses tried to get the children of Israel over the River Jordan and could never do it. Until Joshua comes along and God says, now, arise, cross the river. The River Jordan stands for that thing in your life that you have never been able to overcome. That's your River Jordan. Almost everyone has one. <laughs> Several. <laughs> Several. God says, this year, you're going over Jordan. You're going to overcome the thing that has stood in your way for months, maybe years. Go into the land that I do give you. Not that you have to earn. I do give you. Once you cross the river, once you cross that obstacle, God will give you the life you want. The thing you've been hoping for. Maybe it's a promotion. Maybe it's to buy a house. Maybe it's to pay off a house. Maybe it's to find a wife or a husband. Maybe it's to have a child saved. Maybe it's, I don't know what it is. You know what it is. Clean house. Clean, clean house. <laughs> a, a, a closet that's not catastrophe. <laughs> Your car might be clean. All right, forget all that. Three. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given you, as I said unto Moses. He says, I have given to you. I've already given to you. All the things God wants for you, he's already given to you. You just need to receive them. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. He's saying, it's going to be a lot. I'm planning on giving you a lot. In fact, you see it says the land of the Hittites. Some of it belongs to someone else right now. Someone else has got your car. <laughs> the one that God's going to give you. The house. The victory. God's going to give it to you. This is wonderful. This is beyond, this is almost too good. But it is good, and it is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. Number five, there shall not be any man be able to stand before you or defeat you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. I will not fail you, I will not forsake you. No man, no thing. God is saying to you this morning, my dear friends, no man, no woman, no thing will be able to defeat you if you walk with him, if you go with him, if you trust him, if you cling to him, if you love him. I will not fail you. Oh, my goodness. How much joy and how, how much fear could we get could we do away with if we got up every morning and said, God will not fail me? Because isn't that where the fear comes from? Yeah. Oh, God might fail me. No, God won't fail you. Or forsake you. Be, number six, be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which I swore to give, for, swore to their fathers to give them. You've got to be strong. You've got to have good courage. Okay, listen. Even a dead fish can float downstream. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have some power. You have to have some courage. You have to have some grit. Seven. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or the left that you may prosper whithersoever you go. Okay, I'm going to say, do according to the Bible that my son Jesus died to give you, not Moses. Don't turn from the right or the left. 
verse 8. This book of the law, or what I would say is this Bible, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written therein. For then shall you make your way prosperous, and then shall you have good success. Success is not, how to be successful is not a mystery. It's plain in the Bible. It's to live this way. To swim in the verses of the Bible. Like a fish in the ocean. To know your Bible. To love your Bible. To memorize your Bible. So when you lay awake at night, instead of worrying about X, Y, and Z, to just say, Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. See, if you know these things, you can swim in these things, and you won't turn, and you'll have success. In verse 9, have I not commanded you? In other words, have I not told you? In other words, have I not, have I not promised you? Then be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. Why? Because the Lord your God is with you whithersoever you go. Can I tell you, you're not in this alone. Amen. It's very easy to think you are. When you face a tough situation, you feel like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. No, God is with me. Yes. Every moment, every day. That's hugely comforting to me and I think also to you. So how do we do this? First of all, God's telling you to arise, you and me, to arise and overcome that obstacle that's been there, that river Jordan. God has promised you that no thing or person can defeat you. God is calling you to take possession of the promises he's made to you. In the Old Testament, it was a land flowing with milk and honey. Do you see the picture? It's a wonderful land. It's a good land that God has promised us. But God warns us to be very courageous and not to be afraid. Whenever you feel fear, what you need to say is, I'm not afraid of anything because my God is with me. Yes. You know, I have in my law firm at least 50 cases <clears throat> and that means there's at least 250 people who are against me. There's at least 250 people who are trying to defeat me. But my God is going to cause me to triumph. I'm not afraid of any of those people because my God is with me. That's the life you have to live. We all have things that look scary. Do you think that Goliath looks scary to David? Yes. I think so. But David was not afraid because God was with him. All right, here's one last assurance of victory. It's 2 Corinthians 1.20. I love this verse. It says, For all the promises of God are in Christ, yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God by us. Some of the promises of victory... No. Most of the promises of victory? No. All the promises in both the Old Testament and the New Testament are in Christ. Yes. Oh, I like that word. Yes. And in him, amen. amen. To the glory of God by us. Do you realize it brings glory to God when we believe his promises? God loves it when we do that. So, in closing, I'm going to prophesy over you Amen. and tell you, if you will embrace these promises, the ones we have read, particularly the blessing of Abraham, sevenfold blessing in Genesis chapter 12, and the instructions to Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, if you'll embrace those, if you'll live by those, I prophesy over you, you will overcome every obstacle. You will succeed at what God is calling you to do, and you will become all God has called you to be. 
If you will receive that, can you shout amen? Amen. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. Let's pray. Bow your head with me and pray out loud. Can you pray, Lord Jesus, thank you that you love me, that you bless me. I receive all your promises. And I know 2021 will be a great year. In your name, amen. Thank you, guys. Well, he's working it for our good. Cause he's working it for our good. Oh yes, he's working it for our good. Do you believe it? He's working it for our good. We are, we are. Oh, children of God. Oh, when trials come. you. May the Lord bless and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his healing, his peace, his promises, may you hold on to him. Hold on to those promises that belong to you. And and Father God, we pray great success over your people and miracles in their life in our lives in this church father we also just extend healing prayer to those that are just having a hard time in their bodies we just ask your healing and your your gentle touch on them in jesus holy's name we pray amen all right god bless you